Hello and welcome to our time of worship this morning. It's so good that you're with us. We're going to be thinking today about what happens when we try to put God in a box. What happens when we can't cope with this idea of a God, a creator, a sustainer, a saviour that's so big that is the connectedness of everything in the universe? A God for whom nothing is impossible, when we can't get our heads around it and we decide to shrink God down to be something that we can nail down and make black and white and simple and straightforward and small. And how that really isn't God at all. Help us, join us, be with us as we explore together what that might look like, what it might feel like, and what that might be like for us as a church, as a peoples, just going forward. What happens if you put fashion first in your life, or social media likes, or other things that aren't the connectedness and love in this universe? As always over these past few weeks, we're going to continue by journeying with Moses recognising that since we've had the COVID lockdown, we've all been on this journey. We've been from places that we didn't expect and we're still going through times and places and situations that we don't understand, that we can't make sense of, that we don't feel at home in and that aren't normal or usual to us. We're journeying together. And so we start by saying together, our Moses prayer, recognising that things around us are not what we expect anymore. We say together our prayer of Moses. When we can only see what is before us, Lord, lift our eyes to see beyond. When we can only see what is around us, lift our eyes to see beyond. When we can only see all that we have lost, Lord, lift our eyes to see beyond. When we can only see change and upheaval, Lord, lift our eyes to see beyond. Show us, O Lord, how far we have come. Remind us of how you have stayed with us all that way. Reassure us that you still walk beside us. Restore our faith in all the new things you reveal and the new paths in which you lead us. And though we may not recognise the places we now inhabit, may we trust in your goodness, which is for every generation. Lord, lift our eyes to see beyond. Amen. Our hymn is, All my hope on God is founded.
David Adam is going to read to us from Exodus, the story of the golden calf. Good morning. Today's Bible reading is taken from the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, chapter 32, reading from verses 1 to 14, the golden calf, and is taken from the New King James Version. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a moulded calf. Then they said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And there he made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get down, for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a moulded calf, and worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak and say, He brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have spoken of I give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. So where are we at in our journey? Well, we're at Mount Sinai. We're camped and settled for a short time, just at the base of a mountain where things are a little cooler, where there's perhaps just a small amount of grass or shrubs for animals to graze. A bit like Tatty Holidays, we're having a stop. Moses has gone up the mountain to speak with God. He's received the Ten Commandments, the rules for living, the rules for loving each other in community that will take God's people forward. And if we go back to them, will take us forward as well. But as Moses goes up the mountain, a cloud descends and the people decide they don't want to follow Moses. They actually don't want to hear God in case they die from just the fear of it. And so they leave Moses to go up the mountain above the cloud or into the cloud even. But equally, they didn't want Moses to be gone. They wanted Moses to go and speak with God, but they actually didn't really want Moses to be gone. And it was so much easier to have a God that they could make and they could carry and they could touch and a God that they could feel and a God that was small enough to fit their small ideas, like the Egyptian gods that they remembered from before. The little statues, little icons that the Egyptian people would have in their homes or around them, that they could go to Isis and ask for this or go to another and ask for this. Simple, small gods that just did one thing. And to have a God who was enormous, who was 
so big and so awesome that actually it was frightening. That was lovely, but it was also really scary and they weren't sure about it. And so they wanted a God like they knew, a small God. A God that they remembered from before. The gods that were made of all that they strove for, of gold, of precious metals, of jewels, of jade. Gods that were made of the very thing, the riches, the power that people strove for. If you have a God that's made of everything that's precious and special, it reminds you that your God will bring you the things that are precious and special. The things they wanted for themselves. So surely it was far better to have a golden calf representing fertility of animals, young animals, golden rich animals, money, the kind of power that you could wield if you had your own animals. Better that surely than a God you couldn't always see. And a God who wanted community above personal wealth. But God saw and God was not pleased. Because God is love. And God is grace and God is mercy. God is about us living together. Looking out for the least and the poorest. Looking out for those who have no voice. Not trying to gain riches and power just for ourselves. And we hear in our story that God was so upset that the people just couldn't get the love that they could have, the better life they could share for everyone. But he got really angry. And Moses had to remind him that these were his people. And they loved him anyway. They just made a mistake. And because God is love and mercy and grace, God forgave the people and showed them love and mercy and grace. Just like we do when we get angry with something that somebody else says or does that doesn't seem to fit the values that we thought we taught them. When we try to make God fit in a box, when we choose something else that we can rationalise and fully comprehend and make human by giving it rules and laws and, well, if we do X, then it will do Y, then that really isn't God. Because God is the name that we give to the great I am. Way back at the beginning of our Moses story, Moses met God in a burning bush and God introduced himself as the God of your ancestors, of Abraham and Jacob. And Moses says, well, who will I tell them is sending me? And God says, I am what I am. I am Yahweh. I am. I am the power of the universe that can create and breathe and speak things into being. I am who was before everything and will be when all we know is finished. I am the love that resonates in and through all things. The love that connects all things through ecosystems and communications across time and space. I am what, con co what connects you. I am your doubts and your concerns and I'm also the answer if you spend time with me. Becoming like me, learning from Jesus, the one who came to show us what love looks like in human terms. I am, says God, so much more than a little statue or a lucky pin or a medallion or a pair of socks or a golden calf. I am bigger than you could ever imagine. And if you can begin to grasp how much love is in the world, 
and times that by multiple worlds across the universe, you can just about glimpse that I am love and hope, peace and joy, grace and mercy, not just for you, but for everyone that you are connected with through love, through me. Maureen Fenton is going to lead us in our prayers for others. Living, loving Lord, we come before you now with our prayers for others. We look round our world and see six months on from the start of this pandemic that things have moved on in some ways and stood still in others. Those working through the signs know far more about the virus than at the start and are making different choices based on the evidence. They're working night and day to find a vaccine as soon as it is practically possible. Meanwhile, all over the world, everyone continues trying to carry on with the new normal, which is anything but normal. We pray for those in governments all around the world who are trying to do the right thing to protect us all whilst trying to save their economies. We pray for anyone who's lost a loved one during this pandemic and with so many restrictions have stopped them saying their goodbyes in the way they would have wanted. We pray for all those who work in hospitals, care homes and in any capacity that calls them frontline workers as they carry on with their work throughout ever-changing circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who fear a full lockdown again and the thought of all that might entail and for those who are still fearful of going out and have lost their confidence to try. We pray for those who live alone and don't see family or friends often enough as more restrictions are placed on us all and for those who have family in care homes or in hospital and are restricted as to when they can visit their loved ones. We pray for those who are still urgently requiring treatment but are too scared to go to start the process. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with their mental health at the current time, and we pray that they can find the courage to talk out how they feel to someone who can help them. We pray for those who are still worried about their jobs, as they still don't know if they will have one from one month to the next. We pray for all the students all over the country and our world as they come to universities and colleges from their homes and find that it's so different to what they'd anticipated during this pandemic. And we pray for them and for all the school children that they can remain in education as it's so vitally important for them for their future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those living in refugee camps in conditions we find hard to contemplate and whose future is even more uncertain in these times. We pray for those in war-torn countries where war rages on regardless and where they can't see an end to this endless fear. We pray for the continued work of the aid agencies who work tirelessly to get supplies through in what can be dangerous situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer but we pray too that there will be light at the end of this dark tunnel we find ourselves in. But as Christians, we know you're walking with us every step of the way. And with you by our side, we will come through this. Help us to remember this as we say together the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thinking of the God that we can't put in a box, that we can't make in an image, we sing, praise my soul, the King of Heaven.
pray with me. Lord God, there are times that we are all tempted to put things first, like our work, or how we look, or how our home looks. And we are tempted by society telling us that having is more important than sharing. So help us, God, when it seems that we're putting other things first. And help us when we lose sight of love and we do put other things first, trying so desperately to gain what we can't have other than by you, because you are God. You're the only one that can show us unconditional love. Because you've loved us before we were even born. You will love us till the end of time. And there is nothing, nothing that we can do or say or own or have that will ever make you love us more or love us less than you love us right now. Lord God, help us when we create false idols and false gods to worship rather than you, the love that connects us through the universe and teaches us to live with one another and not just for ourselves. Amen. Thank you for joining me here today. It's been so nice to reflect with you about this journey. I hope that in all you're facing, you can begin to see God in it too. I pray that whether you're joining us on the telephone, on YouTube or Facebook, whether you're going to come and join us in person on Sunday at 11 o'clock, or whether you'll be with us on Monday evening on Zoom for Cafe Church, that you stay safe. Stay well and stay in the love of God. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love for this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>